Ever narrows here, and small eddies of water swirl in the silt. Cavern entrance. A current can be felt drifting through the cavern entrance, bringing with it warm clouds of silt. Yeah, I almost feel like this is the kind of game I would have loved to actually have fully visualized. Mm -hmm. I understand why it's n not, and I like, I love the topographic idea for it, but almost kind of wish, like, it was illustrated with, like, you could kind of see the cliffs and stuff, and you were just kind of a, a sub from a top down. Maybe? Or maybe, like, everything outside of your compass range is tro topographic, but everything within the compass range you actually can see. Just, I, I don't know, I just want to see more of this. And it's almost... I, I want to support them for having these cool topographic maps, because I think topographic maps are really neat. On the other hand, you're going around in an alien ocean, I want to see the whole thing. Or at least when they're describing things, a little illustration pops up along with the log, but... Yeah, aren't you an AI, though? How would you see? That is a good point, but from, like, a, a being a player standpoint. Because, obviously, like, I'm not actually an AI. Tall stock creature. Stocks of this kind seem to produce different bubbles depending on nearby stocks. They are the protectors of their colonies. Large clearing feature. I can't help but feel some unseen processes shaping the growth patterns of this reef. What invisible borders am I crossing? Another glittering so stalk. This thin stalk sits among a bed of other growths, exuding bright bubbles through its pores. Another problem is I'm actually kind of falling asleep here. I think it's the... Uh, what would they refer to it as? Ambiance. Well... Kind of the gurgling and the bubbling oh, of the ocean. Yeah. Actually, it's kind of creepy, but I've heard that some people have sounds very similar to this that they play to their babies to make them comfortable outside the womb. You know, once they're born. Yeah. But is that really what we were hearing the whole time? Okay, shrill sacks do not make good power. Rock outcrop. These scattered boulders and steep rifts in the southern reef suggest a violent geological past. The most effort thing that would be cool. Having two modes of topography mode to view and scan and camera mode to view and collect stuff. Yeah, I, I think all I really just need is just a, a picture here and there for a couple of these scenes or things that we're looking at. Um... Because, yeah, if we just had a little box pop up and it showed, like, the glittering stock, for example, and, you know, it had, like, light animation of just bubbles rising. Isolated stock. Object. Unlike the other specimens, this large stock sits alone, away from the lower beds. It's hard to tell if this is the beginning of a colony or its end. The other, I think, problem I run into is kind of hard to commentate over this kind of thing. Because you're mostly just reading. Which I think is good. I, I think this is the kind of game that would be f really fun to play, and I honestly might even consider playing it on my own time, but I'm not sure if I would be... Oh. Doesn't really change too much, but I can zoom in so we don't see the rest of the map. Uh, I think this is a little too close. Yeah, it's a little too close. The stocks are more sparse between these rock outcrops. This might be the earliest path path north, if I can clear the way. Easiest. Oh, easiest. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, cool to just get static notebook-esque illustrations. True, I... Ooh. Spore clouds. The relative calm of this basin means the water is clogged with spores released by the larger stalks. We were trying to head north, though. Yeah, we were.
the deep forest. Stalks are so thick here, a sea of amber. Waving fingers that must be cleared before we can pass through. Oh, um, put a little thing on them. There you go. Got some bubbles to get them to oh, clear. Oh, that's just one of the, the big ones. But yeah, if you went, like, full Dinotopia with this, I think that would be really rad. Obviously, kind of too late now. I just... Having something concrete to, like, visualize would help a lot. And truly, that is what this is. My big issue is, uh, there's apparently spoilers in here. Uh, so I don't want to look at it too much. Mm -hmm. Because, like, the, the actual text is written in retrospect. Navigating these dense growths is like finding your way through a labyrinth, moving from clearing to clearing, with little sense of where what's ahead. Tall stalk. Some creatures target these tall stalks directly, perhaps because they keep them away from the other, softer stalks nearby. Another glittering stalk. Sample candidate. Bubbles like huge pearls glint among the stalks. How do these tall stalks produce these strange screeching sacks? The growth, the growth patterns of the stalks suggest a complex territorial network. We're underestimating the complexity of these life forms. I can't go there. I guess we can. Uh. You could get more samples, though. Yeah, I'm gonna get two more. We've got limited inventory space, so I can get rid of them whenever I want. So I guess let's go Panabras. Let's get Screechy up in this. <sighs> that was something new species logged. Signal stock. I'm going to call these signal stocks for the signaling role that they play in the stock ecology. Is there... do we have, like... A little lore book? Yeah. Because we got map data. Hmm. Link. Rest retrieval. So I think eventually we get more control over where we go. Okay. Tall bubble producing stocks that protect and monitor stock colonies. Key part of the stock network that stretches across the reef. Okay. Screamy stalks, clear path. East and west are stalks, as far as the eye can see. They fade off into the silt, uh, silt like the towers of a miniature city. Oh, there are more creatures. Delicate set of feeding appendages beneath the creature's shell seem to scrape the outer membrane of the stalks away. Occasionally, when the creature scrapes the stalks too aggressively, they retract and let out a defensive signal to nearby colonies. So that the stalks can warn each other when those guys are near. Mm-hmm. Like, I would adore a Subnautica game like this, where there's less, like, ancient mystery and more just, like, biology. There seems to be some tolerance for the creature scraping by the stalks. They only warn the creature when it cuts too deeply. Spores from the stalks seem to be massing here in large clumps. This might be a good place to sample them. That describes both Obzu and Subnautica. Obzu was interesting. I, my issue with Obzu was the fact that it was all just normal. Um, how to describe it? Okay, let's get rid of a couple of these. Uh... It was all just, like, earth fish, and I lost the script a little bit, because I really wanted to, um... Is that worth it? I'm gonna grab a bit. I'm not entirely sure what the stock spores are useful for, but still. But, like, I wanted to be exploring an alien world with alien life, and it was just kind of like, hey, here's a fish that you've heard of before, and I'm like, aww. And then they gave us dinosaurs, which is cool, but that was about it. These creatures aggressively pursue certain spores, but ignore others completely. Can they detect differences in minimal content? There we go. Got it. 
The relationship between these creatures and the stalks is unclear, but they camouflage themselves among the amber colonies. These two boulders are covered with tiny stalks. A coating of amber fur waving in the currents. Let's see, you wanted a more, uh, much less terror focused hypnotic out of Abzu. I mean, you can still have spooky ocean things. I just wanted to be, wanted to be more like learning and ex exploratory as opposed to like, watch out for the Reaper Leviathan and go grind for subparts. The last the line of edge. fixed stalks before the sandy plains of the central reef. There's a structure over there. Oh, this That's thing? That's it. We're through. This place is overwhelming. So many new species. This is the central reef. I saw on Monet's maps that uh, the shelf flattens out here. But I see some kind of weird square structure up there. Yeah, let's head for that. Rippling silt. Ripples of silt bounce sunlight back up through the water, giving it a golden glow. Shady outcrop. The water beneath this outcrop feels cool, oceanic. Soft currents scrape sand from the rock face. Yeah, let's go. Let's go see if we can get up to this thing. Mhm. Mm Central plain. The center of the reef is flat and sandy, with few rocks to attach the stalks. Um, to the stalks, struggle to see these waters. But yeah, let's let's end here. I think. There it is. I see the way station ahead. Way station. A way station set up by Mine Nomura. It's seen better days, but it still functions beneath the coating of stocks. I wonder if we can get more power here. This place is looking a little worse for wear. Let me see if I can find an access port. Manet never did take care of her equipment. Some things never change. Sorry, give me a sec. I'm just trying to... Got it! Okay. We should be able to access any data stored here. Just open the terminal and take a look. Hmm. Is that a spoofing user? Yeah, spoofing user Dr. Manet Nomura. Last access to history cleared. Log download, yes, no. I mean... Oh, we can also recharge both of those. Map data. Sync complete. Data release to pilot's console. Logs have been cleared. I expected that, given the secrecy Manet seems to be operating under. But the map data mentions something Manet calls the Bloom, out across the Northern Rift. She's been going back and forth to something there, studying it. A unique species, perhaps? Manet. What were you doing here? Why are you keeping this discovery from the world? From me? I'm talking to myself again. Or to... whatever you are. Sorry, I don't mean... Let's head back to the research base. I need to think. With this way station operational, we can call in the base's retrieval drone from the utility panel. This drone will be able to pick us up from any area that we've got a map for. Let's head to the base. I've got a lot to figure out. Restarting. It's resyncing with Bikail OS base. Okay, here we go. Oh, hey. Are you back online? Pretty sharp work for a biologist, if I do say so myself. Looking up that strange casing of yours with the base took some work. And the OS here does not play nicely with whatever you are. But you should have access to select subsystems of the stack now. Name looks to have repurposed some of them, so not everything is functional. 
comms are shot, the generator is only partially working, and one of the retrieval drones is missing. But I've booted up the dive base mapping system and sample storage. The lab is also online with analysis tools and an integrated taxonomy for logging creatures. Take a look. I've already logged the creatures we've discovered in our last dive. For any logged creatures, I'll also put sample requests in for their taxonomy entries. To fulfill these requests, just find and transfer the samples to the lab, then analyze them. I can then use that data to add the creature to uh, add to the creature study. We need to register these species. Head down to the lab level and take a look. I'll also mark some sample requests on and the dive map. By the way, we can grab key samples for our studies while we are out there in the ocean. We are going back out soon. But while you were offline, I spotted a signal. A suit transponder. You can see its location on the dive map. I want to find it. A suit transponder means a suit. And a suit means... Manet. I'll need your help. That suit takes... Um... Wait, really? Oh, that suit takes both of us to pilot it. And it's the only one I've got. Once you are done exploring the base, load into the drive map. We can head out from there. So that's storage. Crew terminal. Ellery Voss. Palm signal. Damaged antenna. Automatic repair not possible. Offsite assistance needed. Contact by call. Contact by call. So, maybe boss is there. Oh, maybe taxonomy is where you take the samples. Stock bark. So, lab analysis complete. Taxonomy updated. Further analysis possible. Stock spore. Okay, so then we do taxonomy. Fungi Nova, restock. Oh, oh are boy. those all the are those all the entries? Yeah. So we've we've got observations, we've got behavior, we've got theories, and we the need sketch. uh we need to complete everything before we get the picture. Well, do you want to read? Oh, okay. I suppose so. Reef stock. Observations recorded by Dr. Ellery Vaz. The reef stocks are fungal life forms which take the form of a series of stalks and plates anchored to rocky substrates. Their chitin exteriors range in color from dark amber to acid yellow, leading them to resemble oversized lichens. These outer mem the wait, this outer membrane is marked with slits which expand and contract, producing a distinctive hum. These slits, or pores, also allow both release of spores, which the colony and wait, by each colony, and the absorption of other colony spores. I, I'm using this term for ease, but are these really seeds or something else? Both the hum and the spore exchange seem to be part of a complex communication network between individual stock patches or colonies. However, like earth fungi, the visible part of these stalks may only be small part of their overall mass. What networks might connect these colonies beneath the ground? Behavior. Analysis of stock spores has revealed a rich cocktail of compounds unique to each spore, some of which are previously unknown to human chemistry. This aspect of the spores and their noticeable exchange between colonies of stalks suggests that these chemical cocktails are part of an information exchange network. However, some of these spores also appear to be true spores, used as an asexual reproduction of stock colonies, suggesting that the information-carrying spores are adapted or modified reproductive spores. Analysis also suggests that the stock's colonies may possess a high level of intelligence and cognition, and that the messaging provided by the spores is nuanced and even subjectively unique to each colony. Patterns across multiple spores from a single colony may even suggest a chemical signature possessed by each stock group. Could these be thought of as stock names? Hmm. 
So we still got to do root sample analysis, but we don't have that. Is that it? Oh, there's more. I mean, for the most part, we actually know much of the information here. So do we want to just skip this? Uh, I mean, I like the lore. Part of it is much of many of these observations were actually part of the little lore bits that we had found earlier. Yeah, you're right. So, eh, okay. Trillstack Laboratory, okay. Formed from a coating of mucus sealed around a pressurized mix of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Yeah, we knew, we knew that. I mean, do we know about the oxygen and carbon dioxide bit? Yeah, okay. Or the mucus? Not really. The oxygen shows the signal stalks are able to absorb oxygen from their surroundings, perhaps through their large pores. Meanwhile, the CO2 must be the result of fermentation process within the stalks themselves. This suggests the presence of fungal symbiote similar to with yeast within the stalk and the possible reproduction of oh, the production of ethanol as a byproduct of this process, though a tissue sample will be necessary to confirm this. Shrill sac production, meanwhile, seems to be a precise art. The pressurization, gas mix, and size of each shrill sac can differ from stock to stock, meaning that warnings can be directed to particular colonies and even individual stocks if necessary. Huh. And they call it Collis Nuntius. Okay. So what else do we have? We haven't really been able to get a sample of any of those nope. animals, though. Observation blister. And generator is active. But it's running kind of slow. Okay. Well, one way or another, I think this is a decent stopping point, at least for now. Uh, oh. Let's go talk to EV, maybe. Aha! Oh, this is a personal log? Yeah. Oh, one. Two, two, one, six. Dr. Ellery Voss. So, the year 2216. Mene is gone, and she's left behind one hell of a mess. This base is falling apart, cannibalized to build way stations out in the ocean. The communications array sliced away, life support failing. Where did she even commandeer this research base from? There's no way Baikal would have supplied it willingly after what she did to them. What did she call me out here for? To witness her disappearance? Or did she simply want me to encounter, as she did, the impossible life of this ocean? How could it have gone ignored for hundreds of years of exploration and conquest? Um, down, please? Sorry? Don't look at your phone. Uh, oh, jeez. Okay, here we go. There are too many questions to even begin. All I can do is keep an account of what happens here. So, what if I can't answer these questions? Someone else might. It'll be weeks, maybe months until the next ship passes close enough to pick up my shuttle transponder. Until then, I'm alone. This place is unbelievably important. Our first contact with life beyond Earth. But something else is happening here too, and I need to know what it is. So, if that's the first of how many logs? There were eight total. So, mm -hmm. presumably this game is about eight, eight hours long? Hmm. That makes take. sense. If you venture out into the ocean and say, go on this quest to find the transponder, find out that Mene isn't with her suit or who knows where she is. Yeah. I mean, she could be dead out there in the suit, or her suit could be empty. Or maybe it got detached from the suit. Yep. So we got a couple of things. So we're here. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, we're not here. This is the way station we stopped off at. But we were taken back. Yeah, so base has detected a suit transponder at these coordinates. Could this be Monet? We'll have to head to the East Reef to find out. Um, Okay, so it might actually be a little bit longer than that. So we also have some side quests. Sample request sing stock tissue. Might be strong currents better for the stock forest. Might be a good place to find exposed or damaged sink stocks. And then, according to the map data, these caves cut back under the forest. Perhaps there are exposed roots inside. So if you want to get the other things. Oh, for the root system ones. Mm -hmm. Is that where the transponder is up to the north? No, 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 down, down, down. Like, what's the little negative sign? Transponder's over here. This is impassable. It's an obstruction. Uh, but right. the, uh, the current is 
is oh, that's what you meant by the eastern. Yeah, that's where it is. Yeah. So. So yeah, we have a fast travel based on these way stations. We can plunk down, probably explore this direction, or somehow scoot this way. Um. It's interesting. I like the setup. I I'm going to stand by my statement of. I wish I could see some of this stuff. Uh, I guess the easiest comparison I would give would actually be uh, Sunless Skies and Sunless Seas, where they had absolutely beautiful environments that you could see all of the stuff you were flying by, and so everything that was described was actually something you could look at, more or less. And I thought that was actually a really nice setup. Obviously, this went for a very specific style, but I'm just... I'm craving some, some visual... Uh, an anchor, I guess, visually to hold on to. Uh, but I do really like the writing, and I do really like the world they're creating here. It's neat. Well, apparently, what is it? They're painting a future in which humans have have not yet encountered alien life before, with the exception of this planet, but have gone on uh, have gone on missions of conquest so I, I'm almost wondering in Baikal I wonder if Baikal is not so much a uh, some kind of ruling entity but a corporation or a probably you know how sometimes in science fiction they have the distant future in which a bunch of mega companies fund their own colonies I mean, on that, other worlds still... and then they war amongst each other and they have their own scientists and their own soldiers and their own and so it seems like Manet stole something from Baikal and had actually left their ranks mm -hmm. maybe because they wanted to keep this planet hidden Yeah, I think they must have purged it from their system maybe they didn't like the idea of other humans knowing about the presence My of alien is life, Manet or there's did not want anybody else knowing about it for whatever reason, mm -hmm. and deleted all the records. I mean, it makes me wonder if maybe these creatures. I mean, the creatures seem benign enough, but the bloom. I wonder what that might. Yeah, I don't know. Bring about. Well, we might. We might play more of this. It kind of depends. It might also be something that I would just as much enjoy playing and reading on my own quietly because mm -hmm. or just listening to you play it if you wanted to do it I don't I don't really know because I don't think this is a two-person series could be but I don't think it needs to be I honestly don't know I'm, I'm kind of stuck with this one because it's like I'm interested enough to keep going but I don't know what shape it would be for the rest of it anyway for now at least thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time